Toxic productivity may be the reason why you're not getting the results that you want in your business. If you've been suffering from burnout, or if it feels like you've been bleeding more money than making more money, or if you feel like you're doing all the things and yet you're still not getting the results that you want, then this is the episode for you. So keep on listening. Hey you, your next level of expansion is here. And you're not going to accomplish it through hustle and grind. Oh no, not you. You allow ease and flow to come through you so that you can manifest the business of your dreams. Welcome to the Aligned Businesswoman podcast, where you get to be in flow and allow your strategic CEO to meet your inner goddess. This is the podcast for female entrepreneurs who want to strengthen their intuition muscle while applying simple and practical business growth strategies to accelerate. We'll combine energetics and strategy along with human design and your gene keys to optimize your business performance and results. Hey, hey there, my friend, Vanessa Ann Miller here, back again with another episode of the Aligned Businesswoman podcast. So last week, I shared that we are kicking off a free segment inside the Aligned Businesswoman Facebook group called Unbusy, Redefining Productivity for Women in Business. This is a free three-day event that we're doing inside the Facebook group. And it's launching a new offer that I'm doing. And it's just a mini offer. It's actually just something I'm doing for fun. And for the Valentine's month, you know, it's a Valentine's theme, which is called blind and then in parentheses strategy date. The reason why it's a blind date with me is because you don't know how long of a strategy call that we're going to get. But for only $97 per spin, What I do is that I put three different types of calls with me. So that's a 60 minute call, a two hour call, or a six hour VIP day with me on the wheel of names. And then we spin. And so you get a minimum of 60 minutes with me. And here's something else that's special. You get to choose the focus of that call. So if you want to do a business audit and really optimize your business strategy so that you are working less yet making more, you can choose that option. If there are some habits you need to reprogram as an entrepreneur and you really want to double down on CEO habits that provide you with that momentum and consistency in the business so that you can get the results faster, then you can choose a habits reprogramming session. Or if you want to do uh, or you want to find more clarity for your business and just really make things a lot easier in the way you show up and what matches your energy, then we could do a clarity call where we look at your human design. So that is so much fun. That's what we're doing. And that's why we have this live event is because I'm kicking this off and I'm announcing this offer. But you have a chance to participate in this cute little offer by going to the show notes and grabbing your spins. You can get as many spins as you want. However, there's only one VIP per three spins. So if you do three spins and you get uh, you could get like maybe a 60, two 60 minute calls with me or two two hour calls with me and one VIP day. We don't know. It's the luck of the draw. So be sure to check that out in the show notes. But for today's episode, I'm going to catch you up on what we're talking about inside the Facebook group. However, in order for you to get the strategies to overcome toxic productivity, which is the topic for today, then you're going to have to go inside the Facebook group for day three to get those strategies there. So make sure you go to the show notes to join the Aligned Businesswoman Facebook group so you can get the whole three-day event for free. So on day one, we kicked off with understanding toxic productivity. What does that mean and how does it manifest in the life of an entrepreneur? And it's interesting is that I think of toxic productivity as a slow poison that is undetectable. We literally don't know that we're in it until something like bam hits up hits us over the head you know whether that is complete burnout where our energy is completely exhausted 
or maybe it's a rift in a relationship or an ending of a relationship, uh, you know, again, a health issue. There's just so many different things that can come up that's like, wait a minute, I didn't even see this coming. That is how slowly lethal, I think, that toxic productivity is. Here are five signs that you might be experiencing toxic productivity. As I mentioned, you may be working until you're completely burned out and burnt out to the point where you're, you just want to sleep for the whole weekend, or maybe you want to check out mentally by participating in some other type of toxic behavior, whether that is consuming more food than usual or drinking more than usual, binge drinking, um, or any kind of recreational drug, you know, uh, that is a sign that you are getting stuck in this loop because you are needing something else to recover so even if it's just rest but rest to the point where you can't even do anything else that maybe you even get sick right a cold comes up something comes up and you can't work another sign that you're experiencing toxic productivity is that or you're prone to this toxic productivity like you're in the loop of it really that you have these unrealistic expectations of yourself that creates an inner dialogue of negativity. So you might have some inner talk where you are just so harsh on yourself. You tell yourself you, you need to do more. You should do more. You're just really putting a lot of pressure on yourself and not giving yourself any kind of praise or celebration for the things that you have accomplished. I want you to imagine that this inner voice, like you pull that inner voice out and you put it in someone else's body. If you had someone talk to you the way that inner voice talks to you, would you want to be friends with? It is borderline abuse. So when you have these unrealistic expectations and you're talking to yourself in a way where it's abusive, then that might be an indicator that you're stuck in this toxic productivity loop, that you're putting so much pressure and not allowing yourself any kind of breather again or a celebration that it's going to be very lethal if you don't nip it in the bud. Another thing is that you can struggle with rest or stillness. I know a lot of people will identify with, I have ADHD and this is why I can't rest. I would invite you to dig a little deeper and find out what was the root cause of that. Like how, how did this come about? Um, And we're going to talk about the root causes in a little bit, but if you have a, if you have a lot of trouble, just you know, resting and giving yourself like intentional time to decompress in a healthy manner that's not binge watching television or Netflix, you know, or binge drinking or binge eating, then I would probably seek help. And I'm going to give you some reflection questions a little bit later that you can do. And the next thing is that if you ever feel guilt or shame for resting, or maybe you even lie that you are resting because God forbid, if you're not busy, then that's shameful. Then you're not working hard enough. So are there any other times that when you're resting or maybe you're on vacation after a certain amount of time, you're like, oh my gosh, I feel guilty. I feel it in my body. Maybe even it leads to sadness or depression. Then it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. And then lastly, if you ignore your health or well-being to the point where you like miss routine checkups, you miss doctor's appointments, you're like neglecting your health, or maybe you're even not even eating or drinking as much water as you should or moving your body as you should, then this is definitely, you know, all these things together are signs that something needs to change in your environment and your situation and your habits and your routine so that you can be able to perform at a higher level without it being a detriment to your health mentally physically emotionally all the things now all of these things have a root cause there is something that led us to feel like we have to work harder that we have to force and we had to keep pushing And four things that I can think about are, the first is societal pressures, the need for a two income household, you know, and there's a lot of shift in our mentality of like, there's, you know, there's the lack, there's the scarcity that we perceive because there's a lot of talk about inflation. 
So I see it all the time where people think, oh my gosh, it's so expensive to go out to eat. You know, it's expensive to do this. And, you know, now everyone wants to be tipped. You want to be tipped at a fast food. And so those things that are happening in a collective situation can put pressure on ourselves to perform more, to perform better, faster, all the things, right? So then we are thinking, okay, I need to make more money in order to survive, which leads to personal insecurities, or they can actually go, you know, the other one to start the other. It, it really doesn't matter. But then the root cause is this personal insecurity, which it could be imposter syndrome, or fear of success, or fear of, fear of failure, or fear of being seen. And this is a tricky root cause, because we would think that it wouldn't put us in the toxic productivity loop if we had a fear of success because aren't we doing more and more and more? But sometimes we're not doing more things that are directly impacting our revenue. Instead, we're doing a lot of busy work to keep ourselves safe and tricking ourselves to think that, hey, I'm doing a lot of work here and one day is going to pay off. But we keep pushing that one day off further and further and further away because we're afraid of this success. We're afraid of being seen. We're afraid that who's going to really want to work with us because we're experiencing this imposter syndrome. Who's going to want to buy from us? Now, you don't have to be a coach or consultant to experience this. You can create a actual product where you worry that you're, you know, this is something you're passionate about, whether that is creating uh, jewelry or that is creating a food item or that's creating Um, just anything that's consumable that you're creating out of your own passion and your expertise and your talents, of course, that can lead to feeling like you have imposter syndrome. We're like, oh my gosh, is someone actually going to like this? Who am I to create this thing? The next thing is, and I see a lot of this, is the fear of inadequacy. Wondering like, am I enough? Am I doing enough? And this is where we get things mixed up. We think that when we do enough, we will be enough. But that's not the case. We simply are enough for just being born. And we get this, you know, sucked into this mentality of like the more we do, the more we're worthy of having. The more we are worthy just, you know, being. But that's not true. And that is one of the biggest things issues that I see with people that are in this toxic productivity loop and I've experienced this so I speak from experience right it's like okay I got to do more I got to do more so I can prove that I'm good enough I got to do more and then when I prove that I'm good enough I'm going to have the results and that money is or that money that results is going to be money that results is going to be the clients that results is going to be the success and then it's like okay well that didn't work but that's okay I'm going to redo my sales funnel I'm going to redo an offer I'm going to redo xyz I'm going to get another another certification I'm going to redo my my niche right that right there is reeking I don't feel worthy enough and quite frankly all of these things doing the work that I do with my clients one to one as well as in the accelerator what I've noticed is that it boils down to negative emotions So negative emotions of fear, anger, sadness, or shame. And all of these other things that I'd mentioned, like fear of inadequacy, personal insecurities, like imposter syndrome, fear of success, um, even societal pressures, because we get to choose how we perceive the world. And if we have a fear of like, gosh, there's just never enough money to pay for the high expense of living, that actually, the root cause is from a fear of lack, right? It's from some kind of fear during our childhood from ages zero to seven when we're programming our brains. And here's something that I did not mention inside the Facebook group during this past two days of lives is that we get so hard on ourselves for not having the mindset of the entrepreneur the CEO, the business person that we want to be. But I want you to think of your brain like a computer. We talk about this all the time on the podcast as well as everywhere else I'm showing up. Like I talk about this, like your brain is literally a computer. So let me ask you, if you don't have the CEO mindset mentality right now or the CEO, um, I'm sorry, the millionaire mindset 
you weren't programmed with it, which is understandable. How many people, you know, growing up were programmed with a millionaire mindset or the CEO mindset? Think of it like this. You are a computer and you have the basic programs. Maybe you don't have Microsoft Word. Maybe you don't have Microsoft Excel. Maybe you don't have Adobe. So why do we beat ourselves up for not having these programs? Instead, we get to choose to install those programs and delete any of the programs that do not serve us. So part of the things that I do with my clients is going to the root cause of these negative emotions so we can pull those things back because it's going to unravel all these other root causes of inadequacy, imposter syndrome, all the things. So here are some things that you can journal about when it comes to getting down to the root cause. First, identify in what area of your life or business are you not completely satisfied? And then how is it a problem for you? What kind of problems is it creating outside of this isolated incident? What do you want to experience instead? Then you must decide to choose opportunities where you can experience what you rather experience instead. It was really as simple as that. But yet we overcomplicate it. We overcomplicate making money, creating success, having joy, love. Let's think of any problem that we perceive as being hungry. If we're hungry, what do we do? We decide what kind of food we want to eat. Then what do we do next? We go get that food. Yet we want to put all these other steps and then all this other logic in between that decision instead of deciding this is what we want and I'm going to go for it. We then get stuck in, well, we got to do a lot of these things so I can get that. But why do we think that? That's when we get to get to the root cause. Another thing that we covered was the caveman mentality versus the modern day man mentality. I'm just taking the strategy of a caveman and then applying the resources of today's man. So this is a process that is engraved in our DNA. Our brain stem can literally hold DNA and belief systems from past 14 generations. So we can apply the same strategy that we use for survival during our caveman days to the way we survive now. So let me give you an example. And you can tell me when you join the Facebook group if you're like, oh my gosh, this totally resonates. There is something that we learned in logic when I was at Baylor. And it was like, if A, then B. And if B, B, then C, then A, then C, right? Because if A equals B and B equals C, well, then naturally A is going to equal C. Well, in the caveman days, If we weren't part of our tribe, if we weren't part of our herd, then we were not safe because one, if we were out alone, we were more vulnerable to attacks by other people and by animals. And if we weren't part of our herd, then we didn't have resources that they had. So we didn't have the shelter. We didn't have the community. We didn't have the food, right? So the strategy that we apply today is that I need to belong to have resources. Well, we identify money as resources. So it goes from I need to belong to have resources to resources includes money. So therefore, I need to belong to have money. And in order for me to belong, I have to be similar. I have to be like other people. And when I'm similar, I'm trusted and I'm liked. This goes back to the root causes of the fear, fear of, you know, being alone, fear of success, fear of failure, all the things that we would fear, including being isolated and not being safe and, you know, scarcity, like having lack, right? This right here is the strategy that we're taking and applying to our lives today. That is why we're forcing and pushing and working so hard because we want to belong. Because we believe that when we belong, we get access to the resources, including money. 
Which brings me to the impact that toxic productivity has on our lives and our business. If we are working so hard where it has us neglecting our health and likely neglecting our relationships, it is isolating us. It is putting us in the problem that we're trying to avoid, which doesn't make any sense. However, it goes back to the NLP strategy of using, and same thing for manifestation, using forward language or toward language, using language of what you want to go towards, not what you're wanting to avoid or run away from. And the more we do this, the more stress we cause on our brains, which actually decreases our creativity and our innovation and our long-term sustainability. So we're putting ourselves or, or we're digging ourselves deeper and deeper in a hole when it's the hole that we're trying to get out of. And eventually what was one situation now becomes our identity. We are that hard worker that will do anything to meet a deadline. We are that person that is the provider, so we work endless hours, which that is taking away from our family. You know, it it goes back to moving us away from our business values, which have a lot to do with our goals. It's time to identify the energy, time, and money leaks so that we can stop this vicious cycle of toxic productivity. Inside the Align Business Woman Facebook group, I'm going to go through strategies to overcome this that are actually sustainable and rejuvenate you to empower you to have the clarity and the creativity to make your business easier. We literally simplify things and reprioritize of like what is really important. If this is important, let's be honest and real. The things that we're doing aren't serving this. It is trying, it's us trying to keep ourselves safe, but we're already safe. So there's a lot of reprogramming and reframing that we get to do to see like, hey, there's an easier way, a better way. All right. I hope you join me inside the Line Business Woman Facebook group so you can get the strategies on day three. They will be living inside the Facebook group. So if you're listening to this and years later, you can join the Facebook group and still get access to to this three-day event. All right, I'll catch you next time on the next episode of The Aligned Businesswoman. Bye-bye for now. Thank you for joining me on this episode of The Aligned Businesswoman podcast. I'm your host, Vanessa Ann Miller, and I'm so excited to share some good news with you. Head over to the show notes so you can grab your free gift and make sure to leave a review and join me inside The Aligned Businesswoman Facebook group. Until next week, bye-bye, my love.